If you want service, if you have a mind to go, we can get you a place. This is word for word what labor recruiter Haldar and the Babu had said when they came to see me. I was just sitting in a tailor shop in Bawanipur when these two came. You'll get 20 rupees in hand if you board the ship and six month wages paid in advance. What I dreaded more was crossing the Kalapani. I am a Muslimani and knew that I'd lose my caste by crossing the seas. One doesn't leave one's shohar or vatan like that. What can you do? When husband and home place are both so miserable. So I boarded the ship for a five-day sea journey to serve some gentleman and his wife. It was a big risk, but I took the offer. Apni marzi se. I got only 10 rupees of the promised sum when I got on board the ship. But Jangli Haldar took 10 rupees back. No wages were paid in advance. Police would not know about that because we were not taken to them, nor the doctor. Then I saw the other coolies. They only had one, two or three rupees, and some had nothing at all. No blankets, no brass spots, no essentials, kuch bhi nahi. But there was no turning back. To whom could I, Bibi Zahuran, complain? I did not even know whose ship it was. And I was but one of 440 indentured laborers on board. Huh. One thing was good on the ship, and that was the food. We were told that it would be the same in Mauritius too. We were taken to the police once on the island, and I was sent to work for Dr. Boileau, a Frenchman and a plantation owner. He had a wife and a very young son. They were living at her father's place in Tamare. I stayed with the wife at first for two months. Then, Dr. Boileau said that his, his child had grown up and Madame Boileau could do without my help. And I ended up at his place at Les Salin. There was much to do at Les Salin. I swept the house, made salt, climbed trees to pick tamarinds, and cut grass for cattle. But I would not, could not work as a sweeper. That would be going against my caste, and I did not want to lose myself more. Fortunately, two friendly black girls offered to do the work for me. They did not understand me at first, but Ahista, Ahista, I started to speak French like them. We knew that Dr. Boileau was a drunkard and a very bad man treated his workers very ill. Indentured laborers were overworked but did not have much choice. If they refused to work, Dr. Boileau would beat them and deny them their wages. If they complained of sickness, they would be put in the stocks and given salt to death. I was spared for some time. Some of my countrymen 
hung themselves due to the hardship. I do not know what it was like in the other plantations because we could not leave ours. The city was out of bounds too. But it did not matter. I had no friends from my land, no money. And I knew nothing of the country here. And I kept serving my master was paid not one pace. At first, I thought that the money was being saved and that I would be paid at one go in the first year like the British men would do. But I went two and a half years working without wages. And at stake, my zut The Boilo wanted to have a connection with me and make me his Raquel, mistress. A lie is my witness. I speak the truth. This is Haram. I had crossed the black waters, left behind husband and country, and now this. Three times I mustered courage and went to the police. And all three times I was sent back. They would not listen to me. French police officers, magistrates, all his countrymen, all corrupt money eaters. I begged to leave and said, I will not work for Dr. Boilu. The police took me back to Les Salines every single time. And every single time, I was slapped, beaten, and kicked by my master because I would not have a connection with him. And once, Dr. Boilo led a needle into my breast. It drew blood. He juiced. Even then, I would not give in to his haram demands. If the police would not help, maybe a woman would. My last hope was Dr. Boilo's wife. I ran off to Tamare, told Madame Boilo about her husband's advances, and that I will not go back to Les Salles. She confronted her husband and said, and said she would break the marriage. Father intervened and matters were settled between husband and wife. And again, Dr. Boilo asked me back at Les Salines, Ya Parishani, I, Bibi Zahuran, a Musulmani, had to get away from that man. Where could I go? In that strange land, I had no means, no paisa. The police had said to just do as I was told. Do? For what? I had come to Mauritius to get decent wages. In bus. Not even the food was as promised. 
for this food and it's all that. And he juiced. He humanized. I I was not the only one in Dr. Borlo's crib. About that time, he had 40 of his men all coolies in the House of Correction. The House of Correction is the place they send you to when you refuse to do what they want. The Indian laborers there had refused to work for Dr. Boilo, tired of our mister's persistent exploitation. And that was where I was put to. I swore that I would not Stay, no work, at least Salin, come what me. Once, my master came with a promise. Stay another two and a half years, and you'll get your wages. But hey, boss, two and a half years more. Even if you were to cut my throat for not staying, I will not stay. I'd rather go back to Calcutta. That's what I told him. But Allah is my witness. In this year, 1838, I, Bibi Zahura, Speak but the truth.